Fire. This is your old buddy George Jones over at the Burger and Gun Range with my next installment on A-List Shoot a Percussion Revolver. So, I have a video of percussion revolvers on my channel. It's me and Nick Saylor and a couple more sitting around right here loading and shooting muzzle loaders. It's almost an hour long for six shots. Uh, it takes a long time to get a percussion revolver loaded correctly. But we're going to show you how to load one. And then I'm going to turn the camera off and finish loading it because, you know, it's don't want so much time to have to edit out. Okay, let's get started. Um, this is a Uberti. Uberti, Pieta, Junkers. Junkers is the Spanish brand. They're kind of cheap. I try and avoid them altogether. Uh, Pietas are not too bad, uh, but I, I prefer I prefer uh, Uberti. That's the best brand. Now, this is not classified as a firearm, okay? You can order one of these from some purveyor and they'll ship it to you through the mail. No adult signature or nothing. I mean, you know, um, it's just not classified as a firearm. So, in Kentucky, a convicted felon is not allowed to have one, but on the federal standard, it's not classified as a firearm. It's classified in Kentucky as a dangerous instrument, which is something that's not particularly designed to be used as a weapon, but if you use it as a weapon, you could be, it could be a classified as assault with a deadly weapon. Okay, what is it? Well, it's a percussion revolver, so you have to load each cylinder individually and cap each cylinder individually in order to get something that'll fire. Okay, so how do you go about that? Well, you need a certain number of things. First thing you need is some balls. He said balls. Now, you can buy some if you want to. Me, I make about everything I use. Um, I cast these balls myself out of soft lead. Uh, you can buy them. Um, you know, they're kind of expensive, but but you can buy them if you don't have the capability to cast them up. Uh, Lee makes a gang mold. You can make six of them at a time. You know, and it's pretty economical. I mean, I'll stop on the side of the road and pick up a cotton picking wheel weight. You know, because I can make, I can take a wheel weight that long and make 638 specials or about 15 of these. Okay, what do you need? Well, first thing you need is caps. So, let's talk about caps for a minute. Get this box open here. There are two kinds of caps for pistols and most, most muzzle-loading revolvers. Single shot and revolvers typically use number 11 percussion caps or number 10 percussion caps. The 10s and 11s will work on this gun either one. The tens are harder to push on there, but they tend to stay on better. The elevens are easier to snug up on there, but sometimes they shoot off. I typically use number elevens on the, in the field, or number elevens on the range, and if I'm carrying a percussion revolver like in muzzle loading season for white-tailed deer, I'll load it up the night before with number tens, push them on there with something soft. Uh, like a plastic rod or the end of a sharpie or something like that. Then you're going to need powder. Well, what do we do with powder? Well, 2FG is pretty good. Uh, you can shoot 3F without any problem. You know, it takes about, 3F is probably the best for the smaller pistols like 36s, and, you know, like that. Um, then you got to have something to prevent a chain fire. What, pray tell, is a chain fire? Well, it's possible to shoot a percussion revolver, and all of them go off. I use this stuff. This is a Shaka Cola can. 
but I put uh, beeswax from toilet seals in this can and one toilet seal will last you a long time. So I take it apart, you know, and goo it in there and put it into a can. And it's pretty stiff stuff and it doesn't shoot off bad. It's better than any other product that I've found for this purpose. All right, let's load a few up. Let's get her gliding. So the first thing we're gonna do is put powder in it. This is 3F, it's about 10 grains. And this thing here, you can push in on this, put your finger over the end of it and shake it upside down and it'll fill your measurer up, okay? And there it is, fold up. Take your loading gate, bring it down. It's important to have your loading gate down. I'll tell you why. Because it keeps you in index, okay? Your loading gate down, bring your powder over, dump your powder in there. That's way too much. <laughs> it's way too much. Okay. What is this? 30 grains? Way too much. That'll wear and dump it back in there. Get it all out. Start all over. That's a good load for 44. Not so good for a... All right. What's this one? No. Bear with me. Get prepared. Never works out. Never works out. Get a pattern measure out here. Get about 15 grains. There we go. Now, fill it up. You can also use this as an applicator. Just use it to pour your powder with. Okay. Over here and get your gun. I like this little guy. You can't miss. Okay. Now, you got your 15 grains in there. Get your ball. Bring it over here. Sit it on there. You notice it doesn't go all the way in. And that's good. So what you do is, bring your gate up, put your gun on a half cock, bring it over to the loading gate, come over here, and crunch it in there. Oh, now we're in business. Now, what's next? Well, we got her loaded. And we load all of them, okay? So, you got that and crunched in there. You bring your loading gate down and leave it down on that ball, okay? There's a reason for that. That keeps you an in index. You know you got that one loaded, okay? Come over here, fill that guy up. Load your next one. Okay? Put your ball on there. Okay, now lift your gate up, bring it over, seat that one. Okay, boom, you got it in there. Shaved off a little ring of lead, that ball fits that chamber perfectly. Leave it just like that, okay? And do that every time. That way, you're not doubling up. Okay. 
That way, you know you're not doubling up. Get you a ball. Bring it up, turn it over, come down, run it in there. Boop, just like that. All right, I'm going to cut it off here and finish loading this cylinder, and then we'll go on to the next thing. Now we've got all six chambers loaded. Okay, now what? Now comes the fun part. Part where you probably need a rag. Okay. Now comes the fun part. We start greasing up the cylinders. It's pretty stiff stuff. I like using it. You put the beeswax to it. Poke it down in there good. All of it you can get to go in there. Every cylinder. Don't take that cylinder around there. Put that in there. Keep poking that beeswax in there. You can't use too much. Don't worry about making a mess. Okay. Don't worry about making a mess. Gob it in there. Make a gom out of it. Daddy used to say, you're making a gom. <laughs> gom. <laughs> it, is. it is kind of a gom, no kidding. Okay, keep turning your cylinders around. Make sure you got it in there good. Maybe that needs, maybe that needs a little more. There you go. That's got a little hairball pocket in it. Maybe it needs a little bit more. Get you some off over here. Put it over here. There you go. Well, there needs a little bit more than that one still. Can't seem to get enough in it. All right, rotate them all around there good. There's one that could use. Got a little air bubble in it. Let's see if we can't. Get some in there. You just can't get enough in it. Just, you know, just keep poking it in there. But this keeps the fire from jumping from one cylinder to the next. You know. Now, you can take and clean your gum up a little bit. And the stuff that's left over, you just stick it back in the can. No problem. Now wipe your finger off fire. Wipe the excess off the gun. Actually, this stuff's pretty good because it keeps fouling from getting into various parts of the gun and makes it a little bit easier to clean later. Now you got a gum on your hands. <laughs> All right, next step, cap it up. Okay, put your lid back on this before it gets away. Next thing you need to do, cap it up. I got the old aspirin bottle, aspirin box. It's a lot easier to get uh, caps out of the aspirin box than it is to get them out of the out of the uh, go over here find us something a cap pusher somewhere that I use all the time cap pusher being a little piece of plastic rod Anything soft that you can use to put pressure on that cap without firing it. You know, that's what you want. Uh, the end of this sheath works pretty good. This is a patch knife for cutting patches for a muzzle loading rifle, but you can use it pretty good as, as a pusher. You find your cap, get it lined up right. Ease it on there. 
it's the hardest part of it. Get you a pusher, push it on there good. Make sure your cap's on there good. If your cap's not on there good, your cylinder won't rotate, okay? And if it won't rotate against the cap, don't force it because the friction of it rubbing against the battery face can set it off. Okay. It's an aggravating process, and I'll be back with you when I get them all on there. And after all of that, our percussion revolver is now completely loaded. Completely loaded. Powder's in it, ball's in it, cylinders are greased, and it's all capped up, ready to go. All right, let's see what happens. In all, that took about a half hour. That's the only problem with these guys. They're fun to shoot, they're smoky. You know, you get to shoot black powder out of them, and they're fun to shoot, but they're kind of an aggravation to get loaded. All right, let's 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 scoot it all back here where you can see what's going on. I like the people to see what's going on. It's kind of why, why we're doing this. Okay. <laughs> you, you fire this thing and then you sit around and wait for the smoke to clear. And this is definitely one you don't want to get your finger up here. Okay. And the cap fell off of the one, one four. All right. When the cap falls off of it, Recap it so you can keep up with which one's cap and which one ain't. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that has been fired. This is ready to go. See if I can hit it. Not so far. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Let's get a little Kentucky elevation going here. Like most of these guys, they shoot a little high. Caps flying everywhere. We've got a loaded one there. I think that's it. I think that was five. I think I got a cap falled off here. I'll recap that guy, make sure. Yeah. Now, if I'd have put number 10s on there, they'd have stayed on there pretty good. But, the thing about it is, 10s are harder to find than 11s. So I tend to shoot 11s, regardless. All right, let's get that over there. Okay, that was a cap shot. I'm 
telling you, I think there's another one in there. All right. All right, maybe I'm wrong. There's a way to inspect it, and that is you gun on half cock here. Run him over. Run your ram down in there. There's a bullet in that one. There's a bullet in that one. What? All right. All right, let's get to inspecting. It may have a rebated rebated chamber. But, I don't know. I'm thinking that guy's got a live one in it somewhere. That cap's been shot. That's the problem with these guys. You can't get them on there, you can't get them off. about our maintenance. We'll go down there and look at that target in a minute. But uh, you got a maintenance issue and that's how to clean it. And you got to clean it pretty good. I'm still thinking I've got a loaded chamber in that thing and I'm like we're going to take it apart and find out. Let's take that wedge pin out of the wedge screw out of there. Loosen that. Okay. Get some soft tap it with, like the butt of this. Pull that wedge out. Bring your rammer up here. Get it around there between the cylinders. And use your to push it apart. And take the cylinder out and inspect it. Oh yeah, I fired all of them. They're all fired. How do you know? Well, you look in there and you can see you can see daylight through the nipple. That means there's no charge in there. Okay. That didn't shoot very good, so I'm going to reload it completely with a little bit better powder charge. And we'll try it again. So I just about got her capped up here. Got her loaded back with 20 grains this time. See if it shoots any better. Uh, like one cap. I'm going with number 11, number 10s this time. Hopefully they'll stay on a little better. All the manufacturer's nipples are just a little bit different. So sometimes one of our company off piece tree limb maybe a cap pusher. They make cappers. Uh, they make a stale drum type. Push it on there and pull it off. But it doesn't sit the cap good. They make an inline capper, holds about 50 caps, you stick it up, boop, it caps on there. But it's not a, typically not on there tight, okay? So I like getting me something cap pusher and push them on there. Okay, she's all gliding now. Let's go back and shoot her again and see what happens. Get everything, everything powder and cap related covered up. 
You never know what's going to happen when you shoot a muzzleloader, and that's all there is to it. All right, kids, here we go. Same target. Here we go. Oh, that's a little better. Sounds a little better anyway. Cap still on it? Yeah. Take a low hold again. Oh, that's a bullseye. Low hold again. Six o'clock off the paper. Not much, but off the paper a little bit. Oh, this is much better. Six o'clock off the paper just a little. Every one of these guns shoots high at close range. Yeah, it's much more productive. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. That looks like a fired cap. Yep, okay. Well, off camera, I reloaded that gun. It took me just about 25 minutes, not counting going down and cutting off the limb to seat the caps with. On this gun, the 10s seem to work better than the 11s. Okay, I fired six shots the first time, and this and this and this were my only hits. Then I recapped and reloaded with uh, 20 grains of, of 3F powder and got one, two, three, four, five, six. But that's with a six o'clock hole down here somewhere. So, does it shoot good? As a percussion revolvers go, it shoots pretty good. Once you got used to that hold, worked out a specific specific chamber loading and so forth, you know, really got the dope on it, probably shoot pretty good. Is it worth it? Tell you the truth, is it worth it? Uh, you go buy a new one like this, is in the three or three and a half finger range. I bought this gun at a pawn shop for half a finger, slightly over half a finger. I've got one at the house that I paid 10% of a finger for. Yeah, rusty, grubby, nasty, brass was black, you know, grips were skin up, you know, nobody bought it, it probably come in a trade, you know, and I walked in there and I looked at it and I said, that poor darling right there needs help. So I took it home with me, cleaned it up real good, and it was in good repair, it just looked like hell. Uh, this gun was in good repair when I got it, it just was kind of grubby looking. Somebody had shot it, in just about the condition it's in right now, and left it that way. I went over, cleaned it up, touched up the blue a little bit, you know, and uh, it's a good gun, nice gun. I've got a 44 just like it, 44 Army just like it, a Uberti, that I paid one whole finger for that would cost, you know, four new. Uh, I picked up one at the flea market. You know, half a finger. I picked up a little 31 caliber Wells Fargo pocket gun, you know, for a half a finger. And I cast my own bullets for the most part. Uh, uh, how much is powder? Powder costs money. How much is powder? Well, if you bought Go X retail, 
it would be somewhere around any it's all over the place it's anywhere from twenty five dollars a pound to a hundred dollars a pound and if you order it be prepared to get your hat knocked in the creek because they're going to put a uh, hazmat on you boom it's going you order it from one of these scalper companies you it's going to they're going to charge you fifty dollars a pound and fifty dollars hazmat um how much can you have? Well, you're allowed to have 25 pounds in transport and 50 pounds in possession without a license. So, you know, we used to go down to New Orleans every year to a D-Day event, and I would run by the run by the powder mill over in New Iberia and go X's place and buy 25 pounds. And it was about $250. Uh, don't do that anymore. I've started buying Schutzen. Uh, Schutzen is a relatively inexpensive brand of black powder, but it shoots good. It shoots just fine. Um, you know, balls, you go buy your Lee mold, gang mold, you know, and you can cast up six round balls at a time. And, um, you know, for nothing. Once you've got your equipment, it doesn't take anything to, uh, to uh, produce it. I mean, you can melt lead in a, on a hot plate. I'd do it outside, you know, in an old uh, aluminum or cast iron pot, small one. And ladle it in there with a stainless steel spoon you know hold it 10 minutes you 10 seconds you open it up and six six thirty sixes drop out you might have trim a sprue or something every once in a while but the same thing goes for 440s for 44 caliber you know and i cast cast balls for 36 double off buck which is 31 caliber Double alt buck, 36 caliber, uh, 44 caliber, 50 caliber round ball, 54 caliber round ball, and uh, 577 round ball, and 577 uh, manet ball, 54 caliber manet ball, 50 caliber manet ball, you know, and buffalo slugs for 50 and 54 caliber. You know, as well as nine millimeters, 38s, 45s, you know, and 308s. I load, cast 308 bullets and load them for little gallery loads to shoot out 30 out sixes over here. Once you get into it, it, you're hooked. That's all there is to it. You're hooked. I've been shooting muzzle loaders and percussion revolvers for 50 years. I shoot them about four times a year, um, you know. Keep all my stuff in one, one, uh, one box, and uh, about every three or four months, I'll get the bug and I'll come over here and I'll shoot everything I got and take them back to the house, clean them up, and then I'm satisfied for a while. I've got five of these. I've got a. Uh, I should shoot. I should have brought the flintlock. I got a flintlock Kentucky pistol. You know, fun to shoot. Yeah, they're fun to shoot. I like shooting them. See, those caps stayed on pretty nice. Now I gotta try and get them all. My other guns, they like number 11s better. You know, and the nipples are supposedly the same size. But from manufacturer to manufacturer, they're small in consider in discrepancies. All right, then, that's about the size of it for Let's go out and shoot a muzzle-loading revolver. As much trouble as it is. But, you know, it's a lot of fun. You use the smoke and the fire and, you know, and the powder and the accessories and fooling around with stuff. And it's just a pretty nice little hobby hobby gun thing. All right, then. Like, take, share, five, commentate, and subscribe. Leave me a little dollar in the Patreon box if you want to. And if you don't want to, well, I'll keep right on making content for you. God bless America. God bless each and every one of us, and I really mean that. 
uh, join the NRA. They'll take these idiots to court and win. Be a good citizen. Get out there and make sure everybody in your family is registered to vote and everybody's voting right. All right, then. We'll see you.